Hello everyone. I am thankful to Dr. Taimur Abbas for giving me the opportunity to give this talk for IEEE Vehicular Technology Young Professionals Seminar Series. In this presentation, I will talk about Ireland's excellent research horizon. And basically the goal is to introduce you to the research horizon of Ireland, main research funding bodies, their scope, the program they support, and the overall picture of research centers in Ireland. Moreover, I will also talk about how Ireland achieved such a good reputation in international level of research. This will help you as a young professional to explore new research opportunities in Ireland, whether to do PhD, postdoc, securing a permanent job, or starting research collaborations with researchers in Ireland. So in uh, this, this is the first uh, part of my presentation. In the second part of my presentation, I will talk about highly cited researchers, what they are, what significance they show, why they are so much respectful in the community, and finally, about Ireland's highly cited researchers. So let me give you a brief introduction about myself, where I come from. I'm an assistant lecturer in Department of Computer Science at Munster Technological University, Cork, Ireland. My main research interests are in wireless networks, blockchain, smart grid, renewable energy resources, and cognitive radio networks. So if we look at Ireland's uh, excellent performance in research, we will see that Ireland is number one in the world of for knowledge diffusion. And number third, for knowledge impact. And number fifth, for knowledge absorption. And number 12th, in, in the category of most innovative country. And as far as research is concerned, Ireland ranks number one in immunology, ranked number second in agriculture science, fifth in neuroscience, and number ninth in molecular biology and genetics and microbiology. And you can see back in 2019, there were around 27 researchers which were supported by the uh, government body of research in Ireland, which is uh, Science Foundation Ireland. And these 27 are the researchers that are mo most highly cited researchers in the world. And these were funded by Science Foundation Ireland, SFI. Now, in terms of uh, when we look at uh, Ireland's ranking and position Ireland with respect to uh, other countries, so Ireland is basically in the top 15 country rankings in terms of publication quality. You can see Ireland is in terms of the quality publication that Ireland is producing. And in terms of field ranking, uh, when we look at the publication quality produced by the researchers in, and scientists in Ireland, it's number one in immunology. So if you want to see number one, uh, first ranking publications all around the globe on immunology, you can see uh, Irish researchers and scientists, they are performing excellent in the domain of immunology and they are ranked number one. Then rank number second in agriculture sciences, fifth in material sciences and neuroscience and behavior and so on and so forth. Now, if we see uh, and categorize the number of research papers and scientific documents uh, produced by researchers and scientists funded by, funded by uh, the Irish uh, funding bodies, uh, which is Science Foundation Ireland, they are producing very good amount of uh, documents on web of science. Uh, scientific documents, and their uh, their basically documents are in uh, top one percent, and they are generally more citable, uh, two point six nine percent more citable and uh, achievable in the top one percent. So this is basically Ireland's position around the globe in terms of scientific output. Now, one may question how this is possible. Well, um, if we look into more detail we can uh, we can understand that this is possible because of the tight coupling of industry 
academia and funding bodies uh, within Ireland, research enabling environment in Ireland, and of course, dedication and effort by the scientists and researchers in Ireland. So all these factors, when combined together, it, uh, it, uh, it realized, uh, it, it made it possible that Ireland made its position around the globe in, in, the, in the excellence. Now, when we look at uh, the, the funding bodies uh, and government agencies, uh, in Ireland, there are uh, various government funding agencies and bodies. The Irish government is very supportive and promoting research in all sectors of the GDP. If we see Ireland's GDP, a significant portion is based on research related to ICT, information and communication technologies. Of course, there are other sectors as well, including engineering, energy, medical technologies, pharmaceuticals, et cetera. In all these sectors, research and innovation is essential in Ireland. So how these funding bodies support, they provide funding for prototype development, basic research, applied research, idea validation, commercialization, targeted projects in specific domains, and industry academia collaborations. So the main bodies are Science Foundation Ireland, SFI, Irish Research Council, IRC, Enterprise Ireland, EI, IDA Ireland, which is Industrial Development Authority, and KTI, the Knowledge Transfer Ireland. So if we look into more detail, uh, basically IDA, let's talk about IDA. So IDA is an agency responsible for the attraction and retention of inward foreign, uh, foreign direct investment, FDI, into Ireland. So its goal is to attract uh, foreign direct investment. And they have a very strong international network and they invite uh, international companies, industries to invest directly in Ireland. And later on, you will see there are several international uh, companies, uh, they, they have their uh, offices in Ireland and they, they, are, uh, they are conducting uh, excellent research in Ireland and uh, making the economy, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in workable condition in Ireland. Then we have this Irish Research Cons Council, IRC. So Irish Research, Research Council operates under the Department of Education and Skills. The core function of uh, the organization is to support research across number of disciplines and career stages. So they, they provide uh, some, uh, some sort of funding uh, across number of disciplines and career stages. Uh, I will later explain in more detail. Then we have Enterprise Ireland, EI, uh, which is an Irish state economic development agency. And it is focusing on helping Irish owned business uh, and to deliver new export sales. So they promote uh, Irish owned businesses so that they can increase their export sales. Then we have uh, KTI, Knowledge Transfer Ireland. Uh, KTI works with Ireland's public fund publicly funded research sector to make it easy for business to access technology, intellectual property, and expertise. And finally, we have SFI, uh, Science Foundation Ireland, which you can say is the uh, is the key body, key funding body, government body. So SFI is a statutory, statutory body in the Republic of Ireland, and it has the responsibility for funding uh, oriented basic and applied research in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM with a strategic focus. SFI is an agency of the Department of Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation, and Science. So you can see these five uh, bodies of the government, they work together and they, they help uh, foreign direct investment uh, to come into Ireland. They help the Irish owned business to increase their export. They interact with uh, uh, universities, they in interact with industries, they interact with businesses to promote and to uh, you know, enable uh, research uh, in Ireland. Now, uh, there is another uh, very good initiative by the government of Ireland, uh, more particularly Enterprise Ireland, uh, which is basically technology gateways. So these technology gateways, basically they are also called as applied research enhancement 
centers, ARE centers, uh, or you can simply say uh, technology gateways. They work under Enterprise Ireland. So what is the goal of these technology gateways? These technology gateways are committed to solving the technical challenges faced by the companies in their efforts to develop new products and services within Ireland. So what are the benefits? Basically, uh, by using technology gateways, uh, companies uh, introduce new products, uh, companies can improve their existing products, they can uh, do informal and iterative development and research, improve processes, and may come up with new processes within their companies. Now, in terms of longer long-term benefits, uh, these uh, companies uh, interact with the technology gateways and improve technological knowledge, cost savings, access to new export markets, improve higher level skills, increase in the overall value of the company, increase in the volume of exports, and they can uh, come up with new domestic sales, and improve ability to attract highly skilled staff. And these technology gateways are geographically placed in uh, different parts of Ireland. You can see from north to south, so east to west, they, they are there. And physically, they they located uh, with, the, with the Institute of Technologies or universities. So in Ireland, we have uh, universities and Institute of Technologies. Higher education sector is divided into uh, these uh, two uh, two types of uh, uh, institute, uh, techno techno uh, education, uh, uh, educational bodies. Now, when we look at these uh, technological gateways, so these technology uh, technological gateways are basically divided into three major categories. The first one is, uh, of course, information and communication technologies and software sector. Uh, so, and they are basically. Uh, center for Effective Solutions for Ambient Living Awareness. Uh, this is located with, uh, with DIT. Then we have uh, 3CS uh, Center, which is basically located at Waterford Institute of Technology. Then we have TEC, which is, which is focusing on uh, embedded system. You can see here, uh, TEC is uh, TEC along with Kappa, which is uh, basically uh, working on um, uh, you know, you know, uh, 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 innovation through light, and uh, they they are they are focusing on photonics and process control, and both of these are located at Cork Institute of Technology, which is currently MTU. Uh, then we have uh, Visar Lab, which is uh, wireless sensor applied research lab. Uh, they provide wireless solutions. Uh, it is located in Letterkenny Institute of Technology. So on these uh, six uh, technology gateways, they are located uh, in different parts of Ireland and associated with different uh, Institute of Technologies and they serve uh, for ICT and software sector. Then we have uh, dedicated technology, technology gateways, which are focusing on bio life sciences and pharmaceuticals. And they are located uh, basically in Waterford Institute of Technology, uh, Institute of Technology Trilly. Uh, among them, we have Pharmaceutical and Molecular Biotechnology Research Center, PMB, uh, PMBRC, which is over here, Pharmaceutical and Health. Then we have uh, Shannon Applied Biotechnological Center, which is SABC. Uh, on, they work on uh, applied biotechnology and they are located at Limerick IT. And similarly, we have uh, ICBC, Ion Channel Biotechnology Center, which is uh, located at uh, Dundalk Institute of Technology. Now, finally, uh, we have uh, the third category of technology gateways, which are focusing on biomedical devices and material uh, materials. They are uh, CREST, MICRA, uh, uh, Center for Advanced Photonics and Process Control, CAPA, and Medical Engineering Design and Innovation Center, uh, MEDIC, so all these, these are located uh, in, in different Institute of Technologies. So these technology gateways, they really help the, the businesses uh, to, uh, to, uh, to improve their uh, you know, products, to improve their processes, 
and they help uh, companies within the region uh, where they are uh, located. Now, in terms of uh, universities and Institute of Technologies, when we look at Ireland, Ireland uh, has eight universities and 14 Institute of Technologies and several other higher education institutes like uh, Royal College of Surgeons uh, uh, and, and there are others as well. So in, in summary, there are eight universities and 14 Institute of Technologies. Uh, the famous universities are uh, Trinity College Dublin, uh, University College Dublin, University College Cork, and uh, we have Munster Technological University, and there are other uh, universities as well. Then we have Institute of Technologies. Institute of Technologies, uh, basically, there are 14, and, and this include Waterford Institute of Technology, uh, Institute of Technology Carlo, Institute of Technology Sligo, and uh, GMIT, and so on and so forth. Now, government basically uh, has taken an initiative to, uh, to basically combine these uh, Institute of Technologies. And in this regard, uh, the government is creating five new technological universities in Ireland. And the first one was uh, developed uh, with the name of TUD, Technological University Dublin. Then the second one, which is recently uh, developed, uh, created uh, in 2021, uh, from January 2021, which is MTU, Munster Technological University, from where I belong. Uh, and it's, it's, the, it's, it's basically the merger of uh, IT Trilly and Cork Institute of Technology. Uh, there are a few other uh, projects are ongoing, which is TUSEI, which will be the merger of WIT and IT Carlo. Both, both are Institute of Technologies. Then we have uh, CUA, which will be the merger of GMIT, IT Sligo, and LYIT. And then uh, there will be merger of, merger of AIT and LIT. So they, they are uh, you know, creating big entities uh, by creating these Institute of Technologies uh, to become uh, technological universities. And this will further uh, you know, increase uh, the, the funding uh, given to these uh, technological universities. And uh, this will also enhance the internationalization aspect in Ireland, more students, more research funding will, uh, will, will come in Ireland and it will further enable uh, the research environment uh, within Ireland. Now, when we look at uh, SFI, Science Foundation Ireland, uh, it is creating uh, enormous impact and huge investment in Ireland STEM sector. And SFI has dedicated research centers these research centers are basically designed for, uh, you know, a specific uh, purpose, and they, they have specific uh, topics. They, they they have their own uh, scope. We have adopt adopt center, uh, which is uh, a research center funded by SFI. Uh, it focuses on digital content technology. So we have this uh, adopt. Then we have Ember. Ember is basically this research center focuses on advanced materials and bioengineering research. Then we have APC. APC is uh, extremely good in microbiome uh, research, and they have plenty of plenty of highly cited researchers. Their research is excellent, and uh, um, Ireland's uh, research on microbiome is uh, due to this APC research center. Then we have. Uh, Beckham uh, uh, Research Center, which is focusing on uh, bioeconomy. Then we have Confirm Research Center, uh, which is focusing on smart manufacturing. Then we have uh, Connect Research Center. Uh, Connect is a research center uh, where I where I am affiliated uh, with. It's basically focusing on. Uh, future networks and communication. So their fo research focuses on future networks and communication. Then we have uh, QRM, which is Center for Research in Medical Devices. They, they are producing and developing uh, medical devices. Then we have Future Neuro, which is focusing on neurological diseases. And uh, you, you can see there's a whole list of uh, research centers they are focusing on a specific topic. And these research centers 
they they have researchers affiliated around, uh, from different universities from different institute of technologies and they uh, they work under the umbrella of these research centers and the and the flow of the funding uh, from FI, F, SFI to these researchers are uh, under these uh, these research centers. Uh, in terms of uh, companies, um, Ireland is uh, extremely good. Uh, there are a lot of international companies that are also based in Ireland. Uh, you you can think about a, an international company. Uh, you 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 can find its base office in Ireland, like Apple, Google, Facebook, Intel, Microsoft. Oracle, Pfizer, Dell. So there are enormous. Uh, you can find more details on IDA uh, website, which is basically uh, providing you um, all the industrial development uh, that that goes on uh, in Ireland. Now SFI basically also uh, support and develop uh, PhD workforce. Uh, for this specific purpose, they have uh, created six. Uh, SFI Center for Research Trainings. So the purpose of these research trainings is to develop PhD workforce, and they, uh, they, they these uh, research training centers uh, they they have their specific scope. Uh, scope, for example, the SFI Center for Research Training in Machine Learning is is uh, is created is de uh, for in developing the PhD workforce in machine learning domain. And we call it ML Labs. So these ML Labs, uh, they they have uh, they each year they they announce a lot of uh, PhD scholarships. Uh, so one can apply and uh, work uh, as a PhD scholar uh, in ML Labs. Then we have uh, Drill, which is uh, focusing on digitally enhanced reality. We have Advanced CRT which is a training research training center in advanced networks for sustainable societies from where i also uh, belong so advanced crt uh, provides funding uh, on uh, networks for sustainable societies and uh, i i am uh, fortunate uh, to to be associated with advanced crt and they are uh, funding uh, two of my uh, uh, phd students then we have uh, Fuse, which is focusing on data sciences. Then we have CRT AI, which is focusing on artificial intelligence. And then finally, we have uh, genomics, which is focusing on uh, genomics data science. Uh, data science. So these are the uh, PhD uh, research training centers. They they train PhD students. They have a very very good funding model, and they support. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, PhD research uh, and provide scholarships uh, to the international candidates in these specific domains. Now, there are other uh, scholarships as well uh, for MS, PhD, and postdoc. For example, uh, the Government of Ireland International Education Scholarships Program is there. And they, uh, with this program, they provide 60 scholarships uh, for one year study at bachelor's, master's, or PhD level. And uh, if, if the student have uh, eligible Irish higher education institution place offer, then they, they, they support these scholarships. We also have SFI industry RDNI fellowship program. Uh, in, in this program, basically, uh, uh, academic researchers wishing to spend time in industry worldwide through the temporary placement of academic researchers with an industry partner is possible. And it's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a very good initiative, and then we have um, IRC Irish Research Council funding. They have several uh, funding um, phases for the uh, uh, for the uh, for different uh, phases of uh, sco uh, scholarship funding scholarships. So this this was all uh, all about uh, the complete horizon of uh, research going on in Ireland. Now I move to the second part of my presentation, which is about highly cited researchers, HCR in, in short form. Uh, it is led by uh, Web of Science, Clary Wett. So basically highly cited researchers are pioneers in their fields, recognized by their peers and applauded by the world. So 
what is this uh, uh, highly cited researchers? So highly cited researchers are basically uh, those top ranked researchers which uh, which are uh, selected by Clarivet. So Clarivet, or in simple word, Web of Science. It's basically a publicly traded company. It is indexed in uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange in United States. Previously, it was the intellectual property of Thomson Reuters, and it uh, it is it has very uh, very huge influence in the research uh, international research. They own Web of Science. Uh, Web of Science uh, is a platform which organizes the world's research information to enable academia, corporations, publishers, and governments to accelerate the pace of research. Pace of research. And they also manages publons, which trace and verify peer review and editorial contributions. So you may uh, aware of publons. Whenever you conduct some review or publish something, uh, it automatic automatically gets updated on publons, and one can see your research activities, uh, your volunteer peer review activities on publons. Then you have Scholar One, which is again managed by Larry Wett. Uh, Scholar One is basically uh, a portal, a website uh, through which a journals uh, manages their uh, submissions and peer review process. So around 7,000 journals, websites use Scholar One to manage their uh, submission, uh, submission and peer review process uh, in their international journals. Uh, Clarivet also owns a journal citations report, which we call as JCR. And it is JCR that ranks all the journals around the globe, and it also issues the impact factor. So when we say that this particular journal has a certain impact factor, so that impact factor is basically issued under journal citation report, and it is owned by Clarivet. Uh, Clarivet also deals with essential science uh, indicator ESI, it actually reveals emerging uh, science trends. And besides this, uh, there are other uh, platforms as well, which uh, Clarivet manages and own. Uh, Clarivet each year uh, re uh, release highly cited researchers list and also the list of citation laureates, which are likely to win a Nobel Prize. So let me go move towards highly cited researchers. So highly cited researchers are among those who have demonstrated significant and broad influence reflected in their publication of multiple papers highly cited by their peers over the course of the last de decade. So basically, uh, they consider last 10 years performance of researchers and scientists around the globe. And it's not just only a single paper they have a certain threshold that a researcher need to have multiple research papers that need to be highly cited. And what does it mean by highly cited? Uh, highly cited means that particular paper in that particular field uh, and air in the web of science receive a top 1%, uh, uh, you know, it's it ranked in the top 1% by citations. So highly cited researchers uh, is basically uh, are one in thousand, uh, you can simply say. So uh, what, what is this citation basically? Uh, Eugene Garfield basically, who was born in 1925, uh, was an American linguist who, uh, who was working at Johns Hopkins University. And he developed a search and catalog system for the National Library of Medicine. And he introduced Shepherd citations, uh, citation in 1953. And he realized he, he realized that science needed a similar system. So uh, just looking back, back to the Shepherd citation, Shepherd citation is a citator using United States legal research that provides a list of all the authorities citing a particular case, statute, or other legal authority. So he thought to have the similar, you know, a database, a similar a similar system. Uh, for the for the for the uh, for the sciences, and he he uh, he founded Institute of Science Information ASI in 1956. So Garfield basically proposed the first science-related citation index in 1964, 
uh, which is uh, which is known as SCI Science Citation Index. And uh, in in 1992, uh, the Institute of Science and Information (ISI) was acquired by Thomson Reuters, uh, the Canadian media group, which is now uh, uh, basically uh, owned by Clarivet. Uh, and you can simply say uh, Clarivet Analytics or Clarivet. Now, the purpose of this citation database is to uh, evaluate uh, researchers' performance, uh, and it can be used uh, in promotion uh, for issuing funding, and it can also be used for uh, for institu institutional ranking and uh, to determine how funding should be allocated. And uh, it also uh, contribute in the ranking of international universities. You know, you have different ranking systems. So they consider these uh, citation database when uh, when uh, when conducting the ranking. So uh, then we have ESI, Essential Science Indicator. It identifies top performing research. Uh, it has more than eleven thousand journals, and it has ten years of data. And it it can be used by uh, you know institutes, countries, and they rank authors, institute countries and journals with respect to their publications and uh, citation performance. So if you want to see a particular country and how that particular country is performing in terms of publications and citations, uh, you can uh, use ESI uh, to get that knowledge. If you want to see which journal is uh, performing best in uh, biochemistry or physical sciences, it's ESI which, will be, uh, which can be used for such ranking. So highly cited researchers have a very strong relationship with Nobel laureates. And uh, the, this year's list, uh, I mean, 2020 list includes 26 Nobel laureates. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very big uh, you know, association that Nobel laureates are highly cited researchers as well, uh, majority of the time. And you can see uh, these are a uh, few Nobel laureates in chemistry. Who also uh, who who were also highly cited researchers in 2020 list. Now here is the more detailed list, and I suggest you to look at uh, the annual report uh, issued by Clarivet for more details. But here you can see uh, these are the Nobel laureates identified as highly cited researchers in 2020 list. So these researchers uh, working in different domain uh, domains of chemistry, economics, physics, chemistry. Uh, and, and there are uh, uh, physiology and other, other domains as well. More details you can find on the, uh, on the annual report. So these highly cited researcher or SCR, they have a very strong uh, influence on academic rankings of universities all around the globe. So you can see when at the ranking scale of 100, uh, the, the Nobel prizes and field medals of the staff uh, which any, any university occupies has a weightage of 20%. And highly cited researchers has a weightage of 20% as well. I'm talking here about the Shanghai ranking. So Shanghai, Shanghai ranking basically issues uh, ranks institutes all around the globe. So they, they give ranking to uh, these uh, international universities. When they rank, they have a criteria. Uh, so among that criteria, they have a total of 100 marks. And out of these 100 marks, uh, they give uh, 20 marks for quality of education that a particular institute or academic uh, organization is providing. Uh, for quality of uh, faculty, 40% uh, marks are uh, assigned. For research output, 40% marks are assigned. And per capita performance is uh, given 10% weightage. So you can see if a particular researcher publishes in nature and science journals. Uh, they, they are one of the prestigious journals. Uh, uh, they, they will be uh, you know, uh, ranked in, in the 20%. They will get 20% weightage. Uh, definitely, it will be normalized. But it, it has a strong, a strong um, weight on the overall uh, weight of the, of the ranking. Similarly, if, I, if an institute has uh, a Nobel Prize or field medals, uh, it will be weighted, weighted with 20% weightage. And as you can see, highly cited researchers also have 20% weightage in the international academic ranking by Shanghai. And similarly, other uh, uh, rankings also consider uh, these highly cited researchers. 
So if we say if we say that uh, there is a university uh, in uh, in some part of the world, it has a Nobel Prize winner, and there is another university which doesn't have a Nobel Prize winner. Definitely, uh, the university uh, who has uh, a Nobel Prize winner uh, as their faculty member, they will get twenty percent weightage. While the university which doesn't have that Nobel Prize winner, they will not receive these twenty percent weightage in that category. And the same case applies to highly cited researchers. So, if a if a particular institute or university has highly cited researcher, they will get twenty percent weightage. And if if a university doesn't have, they will not get that weightage. So, uh, you can understand the uh, the importance of these highly cited researchers. Now, we look at uh, uh, some of the um, highly cited researchers. So you can see here, uh, I mentioned University of Cambridge when uh, in November uh, uh, 2020, uh, these risk, uh, the list of highly cited researchers announced. So all, or, all around the globe, uh, universities and institutes, they, uh, they were very happy and they issued press release. So here, here is one such press release that Cambridge University is basically uh, um, uh, making issuing a press release that their researchers uh, were highly cited researcher uh, uh, in 2020. Similarly, when we look at uh, University of Oxford, and they also uh, issued a press release uh, back in uh, November 2020 that uh, they have uh, top numbers of researchers which are in highly cited researchers list. And when we look at Harvard, Harvard also, uh, you know. Uh, also issued a press release on their website and also uh, to the media that their researchers uh, also made the list, uh, also made their name in, in this highly cited researchers. If we look at other universities like UC Davis, they also, uh, you know, uh, uh, they also uh, mentioned that their 11 uh, researchers are highly cited. Similarly, if you look at Cornell University, they also uh, mentioned that they have highly cited researchers. Uh, and when you look at Melbourne University, they also celebrated that their researchers made their name in the list of highly cited researchers. So all these universities all around the globe, they are uh, basically celebrating that their researchers receive this highly cited researcher award because that will not only increase the reputation of their institutes and their universities, but it, it has a meaning that the researchers that are conducting this research, they, that research has an impact on the society, that, that research has, has, uh, uh, has uh, you know, some influence uh, in, in the research. And here, when we talk about Ireland, uh, of course, in Ireland, uh, UCD, uh, University College Dublin researchers uh, also made their name. So in uh, UCD, there are five professors uh, who are uh, highly cited researchers. So you can see uh, the name of these professors uh, which received the highly cited researcher award uh, in UCD. Uh, NUI Galway also have five researchers which are highly cited researchers in 2020. And overall, there are 30, 33 Ireland-based researchers uh, in this uh, highly cited researchers list. So if you look at countries, uh, Ireland has very small portion, but uh, uh, if we look at the size and the population of Ireland, these 33 researchers means a lot for Ireland because Ireland has a very good GDP. Now, if we look at uh, number of highly cited researchers in different fields, so there are uh, 21 different fields uh, and among each field, we, uh, there are a specific number of highly cited researchers. So you can see in agriculture sciences, uh, there are 111 highly cited researchers in physics there are 179 depending upon you know the the size of that field so in in the field of computer science from where uh, we, from where i belong there are globally 124 highly cited researchers and if you if you look at uh, highly cited researchers by country or region you will see uh, the highest number of highly cited researchers more than 40 percent belongs to U.S. That's why uh, U.S. is dominant in, in, in international research and in economy and in technology and in innovation. 
Then the second number is uh, China mainland, which is uh, which has twelve uh, percent. In UK is on the third number, which has five hundred and fourteen highly cited researchers. And you can see all these uh, uh, countries they have a huge number of highly cited researchers, and that directly relates to uh, the quality of research that these countries are uh, producing. Now, if we look at highly cited researchers by institute and uh, Harvard University has uh, ranked number one. Uh, it has 188 number of highly cited researchers alone in a particular university, Harvard University. Now, if we look at Ireland, whole country Ireland has 33 highly cited researchers, while just alone Harvard University has 188 highly cited researchers. And you can see there's a whole list uh, provided there in, in, in the annual report. You can go through and explore it and understand how, uh, how these highly cited researchers are broken down by institute. Now, fortunately, I'm happy to share you that I'm also a highly cited researcher and in the domain of computer science. And uh, I'm very much happy to uh, explain you this whole complete research horizon of Ireland and explaining you, uh, explain you the role of the role, the role and importance of highly cited researchers. So if you have any question, please feel free to ask me. I will be happy to reply you. Thank you very much uh, for your listening.